All right, we up in mm -hmm. this thing. Billy, I need you, Billy. Not like I usually need you in the past. It sounded serious. I want to apologize for dragging y'all in because we hit y'all with that Black Dads episode and y'all been thinking everything will be sad every time I say I need you. So I need him in a good way. As my brother, as he is, I need him. But before I even tell you why I need you, Billy. Mm -hmm. Ernest. Yo. Hey, man, we missing Simon on this episode, so let's go and dedicate it to him, man. We're going to dedicate this episode to Simon, man. We love you, Simon, man, and you definitely in our prayers. Hey, let me tell you something. Matter of fact, I'm going to take it a step further. It ain't just to Simon. Talk to me. It is to the Simon family. Simon's okay. mama passed away. He had already lost his father. So, uh, you know, it's crazy how we were just talking about that mm -hmm. with your situation. And then this hits right around the corner. So, to my boy Simo, want you to know I love you, boy. Whole love Simon, you, Simon family. Hey, mom and daddy together again. Let's do it. I can't believe I'm drinking this. Uh, those of people at home uh, know that I'm usually drinking something dark. Billy came up with a clever idea to get us off the Steven Seagal for one night. And guys, y'all been asking about the Steven Seagal. Now listen, we're going to get it to y'all. Y'all been out there trying to make your own Steven Seagal. You're going to fuck around and die. All right? Stop trying to make your own Steven Seagal. It's only me, Billy and I that knows how to get this shit. It's imported. Mm -hmm. Fucking 1,700 years ago, this shit was, was on the market. And y'all trying to recreate some shit in 2018. Stop. That's moonshine shit y'all trying to make. Stop that. Go we'll, buddy. Gonna, hey, we'll buddy. get it to y'all. You're going to get it. We're going to get it to y'all. Mm. I, before we get, man, I got to share something with you. Ernest, Ernest, you're not going to believe this, Ernest. Okay. Black guy I'm mad with me. Black guy pissed off with me. Not What's even mad? talking to me. Black guy mad because her daughter started this shit. Her daughter started this fucking shit. Let me tell you what happened. Vonda, you started this shit. Your cousin? My cousin. Okay. She started this shit. Now, y'all know how I joke around with my family. I be fucking over them when they, you know, when they do some crazy shit, I fuck over them, but they know I love them. It's in good taste. Well, Black Air gets on Facebook with a mink coat on, a black mink coat, and the caption is, killing these bitches. <laughs> so. Killing these bitches. She puts the coat on, killing these bitches, and all the family members are in there and know, hey, look at you, black. I see you, black. Yeah, black looking good. Yeah, she comments. They, they stroking her. Yeah, I had to pull out that old school fur on these little young bitches, yada, yada, yada. So I took my little niece's phone and I wrote from her Facebook account on Black Hell's post, take that bullshit off. <laughs> take that bullshit off. It ain't even real fur. So Black Hell jumps in on my niece and goes in on her. I'm still on the page the whole time. It's me. It's me the whole time. It's me. And I'm tearing black ass off the frame with this bullshit ass fur coat on. But it's out of love. It's out of love. So I let it go on. So the whole family started getting involved. Why is Satirica talking so crazy to her auntie? It ain't Satirica. It's me. I got a phone. You and I'm running a muck. And you running a muck. <laughs> I'm running a goddamn muck. On talking about that phone. woman like that. I'm killing her. So black ass starts getting very aggressive. I don't know if it was, you know, she started back smoking. I don't know if it was the, the, the drugs, what, but she like, fuck you and your mammy. Fuck everybody that got something to say about this. So I said, you know, wait, it's getting out of hand. Let me get back home. I said, hey, it's me, guys. Hey, black ass, it's me, your favorite nephew. Hey, just saying what's up, just making a little fun. Love the Jackie boo. -boo. Fuck you, Dee Dee. I knew it was your motherfucking ass anyway. This is her, this is her on, this is her on Facebook with the shit. Yeah. Fuck you, Didi. I knew. Was, so I said, you know what? Let me call Black Air and talk to her. Call Black Air. Black Air sent me the voicemail. So Black Air, I haven't talked to her. Uh, it's been about three months now. When I did this, this was like three months when I did this. When I commented on it. So Black Air, um, some somebody gonna tell you, uh, you know, I'm not gonna apologize. You definitely know that. Man, get Black Allen about it. I won't. I won't. Because you know that you know that jacket wasn't meant to be worn. First of all, I know the jacket. She stole that jacket. Black Allen stole that jacket. She stole it? And she's acting like it's hers. That is not her jacket. That is not her goddamn jacket. <laughs> she got it from somewhere? She's not got it. She stole that goddamn jacket. Somebody might have stole it and it. gave it to Black Allen. Either way, it's some stolen merchandise on your goddamn back. So stop acting like that. I love you. So stop fucking around. 
Come on back. Get right. some of these laughs. Smoke some of this weed. I can't smoke no weed from me. I, you know, I told you, you can't smoke weed with a crackhead. You're going to waste your weed. You're going to waste your weed. First of all, they're going to burn through that weed. Don't let me tell you it. who you can't smoke. But I love you, Black Gap. You can't smoke with Snoop Dogg. Mm. Let me tell you something. Boy, you've been out there doing your goddamn thing on that redemption tour. Redemption Do you really dog. smoke as much as people say you do? Let me tell you something. It's a blunt lit right now in Snoop's possession. Getting lit right now. If he's in within five feet, there's a blunt being lit. No, no. It's not even a blunt. It's a... I had it. It's a Louis the Eighth, King Louis OG, glass tip, backwood roll to perfection. Oh, he smoked backwoods? These are pre-rolled backwoods that they roll in a factory. It's a factory where they got glass pipe tips on them. Mm, mm, mm. Dog, shit is crazy. He ain't rolling shit. All you see him doing is reaching in that bag. If he go in that backpack, it's a problem. Like this shit we smoking is cool. This shit is knockout gas that Snoop got. How much dope? Does Calvin have on his person? I'm gonna tell you what I saw. What did you see? In the backstage. Cause this shit that people want to know at home. Maybe you, you don't get a chance. Of a to gospel get. production. It's a gospel production, by the way. This well, is for I mean, Lord. It's inspirational. And we cussing. Don't get that twisted. Don't come out there thinking you, you don't, you cussing know. Gospel play? Oh yeah. Motherfucker, bitch. You're gonna learn one today. First of all, the nigga play, he performs. Uh, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. That's the train all day. That's the train song of America. Ain't even just a train, just a pass around. Bitch, you got Philly Blunt pussy. It's okay. I'm going to get it back after. Nigga. Just, just make sure you come back my but way. But this play is for the Lord. Yeah, it's okay. play. But, but I mean, it's, it's, the theme of the play is good. It's redemption. It's about niggas redeeming themselves mm -hmm. after they made some decisions in their life. I definitely fuck with it. Uh, I was doing good. Had went through hours and hours of rehearsal. Jakari Johnson is directing it. He done multiple hit play tours. Uh, Eric Benet plays the older version of me. So me and Eric Benet... Is he wearing shoes in the play? Uh, no, he's not wearing shoes in the play. Now, because I wear shoes in the play, he has to try and put some shoes on. He trying to outshoot you. But in rehearsal, matter of fact, I don't know they hate when I do this. Right here in this clip right now, you're going to see me and Eric Benet both with our shoes off, comparing our feet to make sure our feet match up just to see if that shit even works. You really don't fuck with shoes like that. Now nah, he fucking with shoes. He, bar he barefoot fucking bitches. I'm gonna let you know right now. If if, if Eric Rene fucked your bitch, you ain't gonna leave no shoe prints. It's gonna be barefoot He's feet. Gonna be barefoot. Yeah, I'm talking about he putting you know feet on walls. I feel him better grip. And ladies, if you need a man to bare feet, dick you down. Give, give us, us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. Just hold tight. I promise you somebody's in route. Mm. So, so the boy it, don't have no shoes on. Boy ain't got no shoes on. First of all, I wanna let you know, Eric Rene wants to send a shout out to you. Lost his mama second day of the goddamn play in, in production. Damn. So R.I.P. to Eric Benet's mother and his family. So, of course, we backstage talking about something that Eric Benet and I both have a astute understanding of, being married to crazy bitches. Mm. I, it, it's one of those things to yep. where we were able to understand and bond in that moment. Did you have on shoes when you was talking to this boy? I took them off in the course of the you conversation. That's, that's, that's the only right thing to do. So you, that's, that's thoughtful of you, too. I, I, I watched the play. Tamar Braxton is in the play. Tamar's in there. I'm going to tell you, I didn't look at Tamar the first couple, couple weeks that we were rehearsing. Because the head there. shaved? Or the... Well, none of that. Just out of respect. Out of respect. Now, however, she has this thing that she does. Mm -hmm. When she get in show mode, that's a different Tamar. You like that Tamar. That motherfucker came out that dressing room looking outstanding. She was the finest goddamn angel I'd ever seen. She plays an angel. Yeah, plays the angel, and uh, with a fat ass. Her ass is fat? Hey man, I don't know what they did to it, but it looked good. She still married? I don't know. Okay. But it's some dick getting over there. Somebody getting over there too. Somebody going somebody I don't think it's the same nigga that we're married to. And it happens. Here's the deal, does she have the number to the podcast? If she's watching right now, give us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll, we'll get, get somebody, somebody over there too. Let me tell you something, now your sister had seven whole days without nobody talking to her. You ain't got to go that long. I promise you, you won't have to wait that long. Because we're going to get somebody over there to you. We're, gonna, we're not going to let you wait seven whole days. So she's coming out with ass and she's an angel. Yeah. Damn, that's a nice combination. Yeah. That's a, that's a real nice combination. Um, Lil JJ plays young Snoop. Omar Gooden plays uh, his best friend as well. We, we his childhood best friends, Ray Boogie and his DJ and beat maker. Okay. Uh, I play young Terrence, his manager, and uh, man, the play is dope. Now, we going through rehearsal. Oh. Yeah. Who do you play? Young Terrence. I went out for that role. Now, let me tell you why I didn't get that role. 
If you know anything about my auditions, he you know I'm not going to read those lines. Mm -mm. Not at all. I went out for the role of Terrence. Mm -hmm. And I went in and I changed. It was, I don't know what you're playing. Yeah, he don't fuck with changing lines at all. I changed. Let me tell you what anything. they got. What they got. They got a motherfucker that sits at a book. They got all the whole script. And they're watching you and reading along. And everybody, they, every time you say something in the, in the script, you know what they say? Line! That's what they yell out. You got to run, run it back to them. Yeah, dog. They, they telling you fuck the line up. Right there, why you, why you acting? Give me your first line in the movie. And I'm going to tell you what I said in the audition. Uh, <clears throat> first thing I walked in, I walk into uh, in the Snoop's house and I say to his best friend, Ray Boogie, I say, hey, man, the people at the pawn shop called. They said, if you don't pick up your stuff today, we're going to sell it. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Let me tell you what I said. Yeah, what you said? I said, hey, man. You keep pawning your shit off? <laughs> Ain't got shit to do. Ain't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens with that. In the stage play world, <laughs> them lines got to get said. Right. I think niggas don't know when to pull shit, a screen will come right. down, a curtain, a song play. Say your line again. <laughs> hey, man, people from the pawn shop call. They say, if you don't pick up your stuff today, we going to sell it. You see how I said Cut. that? Cut. Cut. Delay. Delay. Let me see what you got. Hey, man. You just gonna keep punning your shit? Cut! Line! That's what he's saying. I was like, nah, that's it. So, go with that. We running the play. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna let you know that Jacarius has an astute level of discipline how he runs his play. But I want you to understand that there's something that is in the air that nobody is compensating for. It's the Snoop factor. Uh. Let me tell you something. We in there at the table read. Uh, let me see that. At the table read, mm -hmm. everybody's gathered around, we're drinking water and everything. We're in Snoop's compound. First of all, this is a massive compound. I want you to imagine a big warehouse, but the inside of that bitch is like a goddamn, uh, uh, goddamn fun house. Okay. All type of little secret rooms. Like imagine being on an enterprise in the middle of Inglewood, Starship Enterprise. Uh. They're giving Snoop everything. He got an arcade room. All the games you pay money for, the good games at the arcade. I ain't talking about Miss, Miss Pac-Man and shit. Anybody fucking with Miss Pac-Man? Mm -hmm. Fuck that bitch. Miss Pac-Man was just like, ah, let's put a bow on it, bitch, and Street just put fight. the game. Street fight. No, no, no. This motherfucker got the Walking Dead game with the with the gun that shake. That motherfucker he got that. He got table tennis. He got the basketball in there. Ski ball. I'm a ski ball. Niggas ain't fucking me in ski ball. I'm hitting them holes at the top left corner. Right, no, niggas ten thousand. Them niggas bitches ten thousand. Niggas, niggas don't even try to ball. hit them. You, you try to go over the top. That. You just don't know. That's the easiest hole to hit. Right. All you gotta do is throw it in the corner. But that's another story. So. Nigga house is crazy. Not house, but the compound. He don't live there, but he got all the shit in there. Okay. We, don't, we, we walking around. We see all this. We get in the room. The factor that's missing is the Snoop factor. Jakarius has gotten us together. Everybody's, you know, ready to pray before we start. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Jakarius is giving the pre-prayer conversation. You know, you know what the pre-prayer is. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to let everybody know. Thank you, brother, for coming out today. And sisters, I'm going to tell you, God is going to use us. And we just want to go to him right now and get his blessing and his will so that we make sure that although we are all entertainers and stars here and famous people that his will be moved to the forefront. Right now, dear Heavenly Father, I want you to. He's flicking the lighter. I'm sitting there saying, I know that goddamn well there ain't a flick going on in prayer. My eyes closed. Right. I open up. Snoop. Got his shit right here. Amen. Amen, cuz. Amen. Amen, cuz. With, with the blunt. Sees me. Looks me dead in the eye and says, did you miss me? God damn it, Snoop. Took, hey. him, took him around the world. We dropped And welcome to one of the best storytelling podcasts. Don't think I'm not going to stop passing that story like Snoop passed me that blunt. That's right. This is the Did You Miss Me podcast. Stories from real life, but real niggas. Imagine if two real niggas gave you a diary mm. in video form. Mm. The real, raw, uncut. Never looked at it like that. I'm Billy Sorrells. I'm d like people. This is Did You Miss Me. Hey, now look, jumping right back to what he did. He looked dead at me, passed me the damn blunt. Now I'm hitting it. I said, fuck it. My life goal is happening in the middle of prayer. Because I prayed that one day I would give to smoke with Snoop. Right. And I was about to smoke with him at the roast. Blunt missed me. It was, it was, he Thank passed God, the blunt man. out. Went to this nigga, went to this nigga. Skip me, went way over there. I was like, oh, they ain't fucking with me on this side. Right, they're not fucking with, with you. They, Clearly, they blunt went way blunt over there. Went and, and skipped you, yeah, they not. They told somebody not to get it, but. So I yeah, read, I'm reading the script. We do the first table read, read through. Didn't do nothing to me. We go through a week of rehearsal. It's cool. Got some good inspirational parts. Snoop does have the number one gospel album out right now, Bible of Love. What? Yeah, where y'all at? Snoop, Snoop got the number one gospel album out right now? That nigga killed the gospel charts for like 
almost 10 weeks. The nigga album been out since the summertime. Number one gospel album. Bible of Love, Snoop Dogg. Got everybody you want on there. That nigga is the, is the Jay-Z of gospel shit. Like Lecrae was the Jay-Z nigga, yeah. was the Kendrick. Snoop came in that thing and, and flipped the game up. He got niggas doing songs together. They never did. You got a saved and unsaved person on the track right now. I want to let you know that. Give me two. Uh, B. Slade. B- dope dude. Used to be called Tony X when he was back heavy in the church. With Tone, T-O-N-E, with an X. Mm-hmm. Huge in the gospel unit. He started back going in them streets, messing with dudes and shit. B. Slade did that thing. Went right back to it. Hey, he living his life. But he's still making them gospel hits, though. He, he ain't nobody fucking with him on the organ. Man, he got everybody on that shit. Snoop got the Snoop, number one Snoop, listen. Album. Fuck if I said anything else. That damn gospel album is outstanding. But it's a, it's Snoop. He's, he, he, you know it's a blunt lit, but he's talking about how God been good to him. So I'm just telling you, man, it's, it's, it's a dope thing. Hey. I, I, go, I say all this to say two fucking weeks of rehearsal. We get to Houston. That's opening night. We're doing the play. We're about midway through. And at a certain point in the play, it gets very high in emotion. Snoop uh, drops to his knees and gives his life back to God. Now, I've watched him do this in rehearsal several times. Did nothing. I, I died laughing one day. One day he so fell. So this is yeah. part of that. He's not really giving his life, but they think he's giving his life. Well, it's, it's in the play because he plays, he plays a version of himself in the play. Okay. The play is about him. Gotcha. Basically an autobiographical story kind of mixed with Scrooge, kind of mixed with, you know, that whole vibe. Right. It's, it's, it's dope the way it's put together. But uh, he drops to his knees in the play. Okay. And he starts crying out to God, take me back. Now, I know he's high as hell the first night. So the first couple times that he's doing this, it, uh, it didn't do nothing to me. But Houston, I don't know what was going on, but he dropped to his knees and he stretched out. And one of those yells kind of got to me. <laughs> I said, oh, man. Oh, he opened me up. <laughs> ah, this is live. Because so now... So now I'm back. I'm, I'm on the side. I'm trying to look off because the tears just started coming. Snoop steady hollering out. Now he going longer than he normally do because people just shouting. So he getting that crowd response. Now it's done went into a Holy Ghost marathon. Waterworks. Who come out the back with their fine ass? Tamar, the angel. She starts singing. I'm in a full cry in the back. Now you see the video about it. There's a lot of different types of cries. Mm-hmm. They come in on me. I'm one of these. I'm in one of these boys. Hold yourself cry. Yeah. That's the hold yourself. Girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here with it. Oh, I'm life. rocking and them goddamn tears is flowing. Oh, yeah. All them tears is flowing. Snoop come out the back. Oh, look, cuz, it's okay. We got to give it back to him sometime. Just give it back to him. <laughs> Just give it back to him. Give it all back to him. Give it back. You trying to hold it, look, cuz, you can't hold that. Look, cuz, you, you can't hold that. Look, cuz. Look, cuz, you, you, you got to give it all back to him. See, you trying to hold some of it. You can't hold none of this. Go, it's too strong for you. Let it go. I miss my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Snoop being the friend that he is, cuz it's all right. I'm your daddy now. Hey, yo, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Snoop said he was your daddy. Yeah. Hey, but he was just trying to come. You need some guidance. I'm going to give it to you. I done made them mistakes. You got to let it go. Them kids in there need you. Tears flowing it's in the back. It's daily coming now. Hey, hey. Now, mind you, we've been smoking weed every day of rehearsal, Mm -hmm. right in the middle of it, getting turned up. And now I'm waterworks in that that goddamn show. What caught you off guard? What caught me all the way off guard. Now everybody looking at me. They're going to give me the the you okay pack. You know that pack where they don't say shit? Mm -hmm. They just. And then, you know, old niggas, they try to console you. They give you the, the this. I don't know if you ever seen this. This this is is it's, it's, it's this motherfucker, but it's, it's low key. It's like low key. It's, I see. You, you got to be a certain Stay old night nigga. Like a young nigga, not gonna go up to you and be like, Mm-mm. but like a fifty year old black man, he give one of these, bite his bottom lip like he Joe Frazier. That motherfucker, you. Stern. God damn it, you got. One. God damn it, you got the promotion down at the plant. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's got the com- right. Got, got the company the truck. Got damn, got the, damn <laughs> sure got the company car. And let me tell you who I met. Who you met? I'm glad you asked, Billy. I met Smokey Norfolk. Oh, he frat too. Mind me to tell you about meeting Marvin Sapp for the first time. Let me tell you. Noop is coming out. Oh, well. How I met him. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We're doing Southern's Homecoming. Oh, you was there. 
I think I see footage of y'all walking up. What happened? I'm right. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm upstairs getting high and drinking Jack Daniels neat. Mm. I came in a day early so I can relax, get some Louisiana food, try to see some of my people, enjoy the evening. Was planning on going to see my daddy, but didn't get in time long. Didn't get in time. So I fucked that up. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just enjoy this time off. So I'm upstairs. I got my partner with me that started doing comedy with me. Shout out to Nutcracker. Nutcracker sitting there doing uh, shots with me. We're doing shots. At the I, college. At the, uh, at the hotel. Oh, okay. So I drink at the college. Okay, go on. I'm going to drink at the college anyway. I'm going to drink, the, I'm gonna drink at the hotel and at the college. They can't stop me. Yeah. Ain't nothing they can do to stop me. So I said, you know what? I need you to take me downstairs and I need you to run me to give me a daiquiri. Okay. I see where this is going. I've been smoking weed and I've been drinking Jack Daniels neat. Mm -hmm. And I'm nice. Mm. I feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm off. Yeah. I'm at home. Yeah. I'm living my life like it's gold. Mm -hmm. So I go downstairs. I got going. Oh, you got so I go downstairs. And as I'm going downstairs, my buddy says, hey, man, how did you meet Deion Sanders? I said, no, how does Deion Sanders know you? I said, well, actually, he was a fan of my work. Saw my videos. And we just kind of hit it off from there. Start talking and texting. It was just, you know, just kind of hit it off. So as I'm talking to him, a group of guys come in. So I'm like, yeah, man. I'm, I'm like, yeah, man. He's a really cool guy. Hey, D-Lay. Hey, man, can I get a picture? Man, I'm a big fan. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, man, my name's Isaiah. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you, Isaiah. So I put, I got weed in my hand. Weed in my hand. So I got my weed. I put my weed down, and I put my drink down. And I said, right, what's your name, brother? He said, my name's Isaiah, man. I'm a gospel artist. I was like, all right, cool. That's what's up. Isaiah. Don't get the last name at the point. So still can't remember what his last name is. Uh, but he, he's, he's a big guy. He's, he's, he's pretty known. He's, he, he's with Smokey. Isaiah, man, forgive me, my bad brother, but he's with him. So we take the picture. He was like, man, thank you, man. I'm a big fan. So the guy with the camera, I said, hey, brother, what's your name? He said, Smokey. I said, Smokey what? Smokey Norfolk. I was like, oh, shit. Hey, man, I'm a fan. He was like, D like, man, I'm a fan. I'm like, oh, shit, man. He was like, man, let me get a picture with you because I'm nobody in my house. My sons love you. That's how I found out about you. They said you used my music in one of your videos. Man, maybe I can be somebody in my house. Let's get a picture. We laugh and talk. Then I realized, I said, oh, shit. This man is a bishop. Yeah. I'm lit. What you think they're doing for a Sunday start? That's what I said. Let me tell you something. That's what I Let said. Let me tell you something. That's what I said. Preachers. Pimps, they both gonna get money out of you. You gotta get it. They gotta lie to you to get it. They gotta have it. Gotta lie to you at some point. I, that's what I got comfortable. And niggas that tell good lies gonna have two things following right behind them. You know what them two things are? Mm -hmm. Money and hoes. Money and a bad Wiz Khalifa made a song about it. I got money and hoes. Money and hoes. See, the club and the church, a lot alike. The nigga with the most money is elevated in there. In the VIP niggas, they standing up there. Bishop standing up there. Billy, you know what? Got, got hoes bringing shit to them, you know? You absolutely In the right. club, you got the bottle girls at church, you got the ushers, you know what I'm saying? Then the, then the pastor's assistants, you know? Billy, it's a correlation. The, that's why I got comfortable. At the club, what you got? You know what you got at the club? Got the DJ booth, they shouting you out. What's going on? Praise and worship, they shouting out pastor. Then you know who in here. He in here. Yeah, dog. All of it's going to result to, you know, Somebody fucking after they leave there. Yeah, if you leave a church or a club, there's some fuck, good fucking going on. That's true. That just where, where, where you want to have you fucking at? You want to do it right after church before dinner, before supper? You want to get it at 3.30. It's going to be 3.30, 3.30 p.m. or a.m. Whichever way. way you want to get it. Get some great fucking happening at the church. It's usually Especially when, when you ain't got shit to worry about. But you know why it's the greatest? Why? Because you're refreshed. Man, you're refreshed. You, 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 you're you're empty. You're empty. You emptied out all your sins in the church. You're a new man, you're rejuvenated, you're feeling jovial. Yeah. You're loving life, you throw good dick. Yeah. That's how it goes. So I felt comfortable in that moment. After I was like, man, he's the pastor. And I said, you know what? I went and grabbed my liquor and, and my weed. weed. I like your style. And I looked at her, I was like, yeah, this is what it is. He didn't judge me, he didn't look crazy at all. The good ones never do. I felt, I felt 
good, bro. Billy, let me tell you something, man. I used to do some foul shit, bro. I was thinking the other day, not foul to that extent. I never was good with jobs, Billy. I was thinking, Did I used he? to work at Athletic Express. It was a shoe spot. It was like a Foot Locker, but an extension of a Foot Locker. And Athletic Express was a cool little spot because I was in school and I could get the, the nice kicks, whatever the newest shit is. I was getting it. But here's my thing with me and jobs. When I feel like I'm not being compensated properly. You don't give a fuck. I lose it. I, immediately, I don't give a fuck. Immediately. Now, I was doing good. I was being on time. I was fucking hustling, selling shit, and I wasn't getting no commission. Mm. I'm just humping. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody in the store was all friends. We all played ball together. Our buddy that was older than us was the manager. Mm. Above him, the GM, no, he was assistant manager. The manager name was George. He was our frat. George came in a little later amongst our crew. Right. So we kind of was feeling George out, just trying to see how he was. Right? Just trying to gauge. You don't, you don't know you don't what he on. I don't know what you on. So we would all be doing some healthy competition. You got, I'm going to outsell you. Mm. I'm going to outsell you. But the yeah. only person that was getting some, getting commission on it was our buddy who was the assistant manager. Mm -hmm. So other than that, it was just competition. But then, like, when back to school time come, they would have real competitions. Oh, who can sell the most? Like, who going to sell the most backpacks? Whoever sell the most backpacks, get 500 bucks, some brand new shoes, and brought brand new gear. So for us, it was like, nigga, that's it. And I feel like I can outsell anybody anyway. I feel like I can outsell George. Yeah. George, I feel like I can fuck you up too. Yeah. I was with it. We're selling backpacks. Now, this is how we keep a tally of it. There's a white sheet. With everybody's name on it. Yeah. Right, D, Ronnie, George, Fred, right? Everybody's name, right? So everybody sees pretty much what the score is. Everybody yeah. can tell. So the day starts. I jump out. I sell like five. So I was like, I ain't even gonna let up off of them. I so at five, let me go get me a lunch quick. We grab my lunch, put it in the back and eat that shit. You know, when I get a little dull moment, yeah. I'm humping. Yeah. So I'm humping. Then towards the end of the day, I think I was up like 12 backpacks. Right? Yeah. I'm up 12 backpacks. So I'm not tripping because clearly I won this. It's like maybe two hours left on the shift. I'm not tripping. I won this. I said, you know what? I'm going to go take my full break now. Cleared out and worn this shit. Yeah. I'm gonna go take my full break. So I go on break. I'm up 12 on everybody. 12 shoes? 12, 12 backpacks. backpacks? God damn. Selling the fuck out of them backpacks. I'm killing this shit. I go take my hour lunch, take my time getting back because I'm not worried about shit. Damn. Sitting there, it's about an hour left in my shift. I was like, hey, about ready to collect my money. Joy said, whoa, big dog, you ain't seen the list? I was like, yeah, I was up 12. Ooh, hey, you better, you better get the hustling, because I'm up one on you. You sold 13 backpacks in an hour, nigga? <laughs> you sold 13 backpacks in an hour? I'm like, nah. I'm like, George, come on, man. Come on. Nah, big dog, I was humping, man. We had a little rush come through here, man. He saw always called everybody big dog. Nah, big dog. Man, had a rush coming through here, man. And, shh, and I, was, I was hitting him, man. Families was coming through. I was just hitting him with it, man. I was hitting with it, big dog. Hey, man, get your hustle on, big dog. You, you, got, you got an hour left. Yeah. I'm like, man, the mall getting ready to close, bro. Ain't nobody else gonna buy no goddamn backpack. Yeah. Shift in. Whoa. He getting the money at the register. Everybody see it, five hundred dollars, right? Go to me, right? I'm getting these shoes, right? I'm looking at George. I said, George, you fucked up. I ain't telling him out loud. I said he fucked up. Didi ain't coming back, no regular employee. I got some for your ass. From that point on, I was like, it's time for me to rack up. You getting all the shit you can. Um, Getting in that bitch. I come in there 
and I'm leaving with two pair of uh, brand new uh, uh, basketball shorts. That's underneath. I'm changing them bitches on break. When I'm, on set, I'm, I'm going to the room, I'm taking them bitches off, putting them back on. I'm getting my size. I'm taking my shoe size, getting whatever shoe I want. Just about every other shift, I'm, every other time I'm working, I'm doing this. I'm getting the shoe, I'm putting it in the, yeah. in the trash, mm -hmm. in a little section. Oh, the good old taking it to the trash. Man, I'm, I'm about to clean up. You fucked over me. You know you didn't sell no fucking 13 backpacks. But it didn't matter because he fucked you. You hard as fuck, man. Yeah, and you got them back. Got something for your goddamn ass. I'm wearing their ass out. I got shit at home. Stack the fuck up. Mm -hmm. One night, I'll never forget, there was some Jordans coming out. Who tripping? Not me. You finna hit the I got that size thing. nine. I don't know. I got the size nine. You got what you need. Got it, right? Threw me some socks in. Threw me some, some, uh, some Nike apparel in there. Put my shit up in a bag and we'll put it in the trash can. I will put it inside the dumpster. Put it in the little box on the side, inside the dumpster. I'm in there one night, smiling, living in life of Riley. Nigga, shift in. I get in the car, drive around like we leaving, stop at the dumpster. The dumpster empty. Wait, the whole stash was in the dumpster? A trash man don't never come at night. Mm -mm. Nah, he don't come at night. That nigga don't never come at night. No, no, he don't come at night. But it was the holidays, so they was making extra trips because niggas was, you know, it's shoe stores. Oh, okay. Nigga, I'm hot. So I'm getting in there, just about, I'm getting ready to leave because I'm going to school. I'm getting ready to go to college. And George is starting to get suspicious. Yeah. Because his inventory is getting low. Yeah. And low. It's getting real low. Because when you're doing it like that consecutively, you giving other people shit. I'm, it's not even for me. Black Al, I know you ain't fucking mad at me. I got you some fucking shoes and some... Not even... You stole some shit and I gave you some... Whole nother... Don't be fucking mad at me. I'm getting people at home shit. I'm balling out of control. I'm not worried about shit. Yeah. George is getting suspicious. Mm -hmm. George getting suspicious. Called me in the office one day. I got them shorts on up underneath. He called me in there and he was asking me about stealing. I would already stole. It's on me. All you gotta do is say, Un pull your shirt out. You gonna see them goddamn Carolina blues. <laughs> wrapped around my goddamn nigga, I got them Carolina blues. Carolina blues. Man, I them Carolina blues, they hit when you came in there too, boy. Man, you know I'm in there and my uncle come in there one day, Fremo. It's like my last day. If you don't know Fremo, Fremo is uh, my uncle who I looked up to when I was a youngster. Yeah. That's my mama's brother. Yeah. Solid ass cat. Love him. Mm -hmm. Street nigga. Oh, man. Love him. So he hustling at this time. This is the type of nigga he is. He, gonna, he finna flash. He finna flash. He about to flash on y'all ass. Hey, he coming there. He got his nephews. He got his daughter. Got like four or five people around him. He's back to school. He, he going there. He was like, Sid, y'all get whatever y'all want. Said, I got it. I'm like, oh shit. I'm hustling. Let me go and get this sale. That's my uncle, right? They picking up sh shoes, jerseys, shorts, extra shoes, right? They get up there. It's about $600 worth of shit. These kids is excited. These goddamn kids is excited. My uncle said, Fremo say, uh, said, I know y'all gonna give me a discount or something up in this bitch. Said, all the motherfucking money I didn't spend, y'all gonna give me a discount or something in this bitch. <laughs> you ain't spent the money yet. He already wants that discount. I told you, he that nigga that's, he flat, but he want that discount. Uh, they said, uh, shit, we can give you like 5% off. He was like, said, all the money I spent this motherfucker, you gonna give me more than that? <laughs> So I'm like, oh shit, here we go. This is my family member. I ain't, I ain't know where, I ain't no telling how this shit can go. They said, nah, bro, we, that's the best we can do. The nigga said, man, put all that shit back. <laughs> the kids, his daughter crying and shit. He don't put all that shit back. 
We don't, we don't want none of this shit. Hey, man. Ain't nothing like a daddy making a point. put all that shit back. Made him put it every goddamn leg back. I was like, this is so embarrassing. And it's my goddamn family, too. Man, you know, when, when you, you, you saying that about uh, just him being, again, a black daddy trying to make a fucking point, it'll take you down a slippery slope of, of shit that your kid's going to suffer through because your daddy want to prove a point. He ain't right all the time. Just think about him. We be definitely wrong. Don't give a fuck. Loud and wrong. Argue you down about some shit. Oh, yeah. You know, we can't even go to Cracker Barrel. They said my daddy stole some tip money out of there. <laughs> he sued the fuck out of Cracker Barrel. <coughs> <coughs> now listen, <coughs> let me tell you something. <coughs> he sued Cracker Barrel in 96. Stole money. <laughs> say it again. Say they, it again. They say my... They told my daddy he stole some tip money. Yeah. Oh, See, they falsely they accused him. him. Yeah, so look, I'll tell you what happened. We, first of all, it's early as fuck in the morning. Anyway, when this story starts. I wanna let I wanna I wanna enter the story with you knowing that it is ridiculous to be a, a, a teenager slash growing child who has to enforce the logic of his daddy. This is ridiculous. A grown man who's 40 some odd years old has got an opinion about life and don't give a fuck if how nobody else feel. He makes us enforce the shit. It's, 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 I'm telling you, man, it's frustrating. All right. So now I'm going to jump back to the night of it, the, the day in question. It was about 630, 645 in the morning. We walking in the Cracker Barrel. Ain't nowhere to sit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's packed full of people. Mm -hmm. So we sitting up there waiting. 10, 15 minutes go by. 7, 15, we've been up there for a whole damn near 20, 20 25 minutes. Ain't, ain't sat down yet. Finally, table opens up. The lady says, oh, it is the table open back in the back. You can go out and go back there. I'll go get something to wipe the table off with. We go. We sit down at the table. It's plate, 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 plate. Cook, cook. Just sitting there. Now, we ain't tripping. Some people are bougie. It's poor etiquette to sit at a table that's got food that ain't been taken away. But just Cracker Barrel, and they, they slam packed. So we're standing there. The lady comes, starts picking up the plates. Behind her comes a white man, bald in the middle, sides. He got that, got some big, thick ass glasses, tall, hat on. A, I always think niggas is goofy whenever you wear a short sleeve shirt with a tie. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> that, that's goofy as hell. That is goofy. So he comes up, got an apron on, walks right over to the table. He's walking so fast, he can't be coming our way. All right. He walks beeline, stops dead in center and says, you can take the money or you can get out. But you're not going to do both. You're not going to sit in here and take the money. I was like, my daddy and I looked at each other. We started laughing. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is he talking about, son? I, was like, I don't know, daddy. He must be talking with somebody else. Sir, you heard me. You took that tip money, sir, and we saw it. Now, if you're going to be a thieves, thieves ain't want to hear a Cracker Barrel. That's not how we live our lives. That's not how we do things around here. We don't steal. So, at this point, my daddy's like, hey, man. <laughs> hey. Hey, I know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. I know good and goddamn well, white boy. You ain't talking to me like that in here. Nah, doc, you got the wrong person. You got the wrong person. I mean, maybe, maybe you should know who, who you're dealing with, partner. That was his word when he got upset. Because he kicked me with them Stacey Adams and called me partner. <laughs> partner. You can you, you get your ass out of here, you and your bitch ass little homeboys. Partner. <laughs> so he reaches in his pocket. I know what's in that pocket. Because I know my daddy. Daddy took so much dope and guns out of Sterling High School. In order for them to expedite the paperwork, they deputized that nigga. My daddy's a full-blown Precinct 7 deputy. Badge and everything. All right. Tell you how he lost his badge. That's a whole nother story. All right. So he reach in there, he flips the badge out with his ID. It looked like a police badge, because it is a police badge. Right. But my dad ain't no police. He's a principal. But he like this, man. First of all, you don't know if he's an undercover cop or not. You don't know. Because he got this big ass. He, he wasn't trying to be nothing but what he was. He had the walkie-talkie on his hip. Right. He had that thing clamped on. He had his jacket on. My daddy was kind of a big nigga at that time, so he flipped it out. He's like, hey, what you got to say about that now? Yeah, partner. 
constable in there. So the man's like, oh, sir, uh, maybe there's a misunderstanding. No, 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 don't, don't serve me now. Roll the tape back. Roll the tape back. That's all my daddy said. Roll the tape, Roll the tape, back. tape back. Roll the tape back. Because they'll see. Now he, now he talking to everybody. <laughs> you know, I serve a God. Oh, he got a speech. That don't wants to point the finger at nobody. Everybody is equal. See, but some people don't believe that. This man thinks I steal. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't steal. My name is Bill Sorrells. I'm a principal at Sterling High School. Took over 270 guns in a five-year period. I took almost 675 pounds of marijuana off the streets. He, he going facts for facts. Niggas give his stats. I was a part of the program, Project 714. You might have heard of it. National Program Against Drugs and Alcohol in the Schools. I'm a counseling specialist, drug specialist, gang task force specialist. And this man won't tell me I stole $5, man. i give you $5 before you say I stole it. Come on, son. We out of here. So they trying to stop him. Sir, you know, we, we, there was a misunderstanding. Bus boy walked over. White man was like, he took the money. He was like, no, right here. I pick it right here. You tell me to put it right here. So now everybody's like, oh, man, it's crazy. People getting up, walking towards us. My dad's like, no, son, don't even talk to him. They wrote a check that their ass can't cash. <laughs> That's discrimination. That's defamation. See, I had to make sure I talked loud so the people knew my name when I said my name, when I said it in there, when they're going to take a statement. It's okay. They're going to pay today. They're going to pay. So my daddy gets on the phone. He starts calling. Now, these days, you can't just Google a number and dial it. Right. He hitting 411, taking them $2 charges to the chin. <laughs> <laughs> Information. Give me the Rainbow, Co Rainbow Push Coalition, Jesse Jackson. <laughs> What, what listen? Rainbow push. Rainbow push. Jesse, I need him. Get him on the line. He calls Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. This nigga just going down the line calling the civil rights movement at this time. This 9-7. He don't give a fuck. He called him. Then he called the NAACP Houston chapter. They was like, well, sir, I don't know what you want us to do. It's discrimination. And I want to start a petition to boycott Crocker Barrel. Because they don't deserve our business. Look at the name, Cracker Barrel. It's a barrel of crackers. Now, crackers ain't never like no niggas. I'm telling you, he hot. Going in. He, now, my daddy is a documentarian, bro. He's going to take account of everything. The man got a parking receipt from that gas on his way because he filled his truck up the same time. What this got to do with the, the Cracker Barrel? I don't know. But he got a folder and he got the shit laminated because he's a what? Principal. Uh, shit flipped out. Shit. All his shit with, in a binder. <clears throat> you see this one? This is my receipt right here for when I got gas. I filled up that morning. And he got an arrow going over to his next stop. Then I paid the park. But I only paid the park because the parking garage was in the bank and I couldn't leave my pack my car on the street. So I left out of there, pulled over the Cracker Barrel, pulled right in. You know, we got there because I called my wife. Uh, you know, it, it was about 6.45. You know, I got to be to work. 745, kids start coming in. And, uh, you know, right here is where I, I, I went in there and uh, you know, I was already ready to order and everything. And the man, you know, called me a thief, man. Told me I stole, stole some money. I ain't never took none of a day in my life that didn't belong to me. I'm like, oh, this nigga telling the story. So my daddy gets shut down by everybody on trying <laughs> to take this case national. Just, it's, it's you know, it's well, no Well, nobody yep. take the case, man. Nobody, nobody, you know, it started out, he was with, you know. Nobody take the case. He started out with some big time Houston lawyers, you know what I'm saying? And, they, you know, they was listening to him. He telling it. And he was like, so uh, did they put their hands on you at the end of it? No. They told me I stole the tip money. So did they call you a nigga? <laughs> no. Nah. But he thought I was a nigga because I said I stole the tip money. So did anybody else call you a nigga in the restaurant? No, nah, but they thought I stole the tip money. Uh. Well, what, did the police come in and did they assault you or something? No. Police didn't come because I left. Okay, so what, how do you want to deal with this? I want to sue him for, so he never ordered nothing. No, because I walked out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, did your food not come? Did you place the order? No, because no. I walked out of there. <laughs> So, so, this, so, this man is sitting there like, you know how you see somebody waiting for him? He like, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Daddy right there with him. Yeah. But I, I believe strongly that this, this right. is easily a $1.1 million lawsuit, <laughs> a settlement. 
Because I'm, I told you I'm in the game task force. I'm a principal. I'm a deputy. <laughs> you need to start talking all this shit. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Let me flip through that book. He said, no. Nah. Let me tell you when I knew shit was fucked up for my daddy. I knew shit was fucked up when he looking through that book. And my daddy kept saying that 1.1 million. And he's like, yeah, no. Nah. Ain't going to be no 1.1 million <laughs> if they do sell <laughs> But he don't look at my daddy. He just keep flipping through the book. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't no one point. So, bro, my daddy is unsuccessful with landing any attorney that we wanted to see that the NAACP refer, referred us to. We then started just praying about it. We prayed, leaving Bible study. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to give, give my problem to God. Now, we go to Windsor Village, one of the premier big churches in Houston. This is the late 90s. Everybody in church. Nothing else to do. Ain't no internet. You at mm -hmm. church. Yo, damn what you did. You blew crack. You at church, nigga. You right there. You coming to church. Ceases Field. This shit is like a concert. Kirk Franklin is in the circuit. You know what I'm saying? John P. Key. They, you know, never know who's going to show up. Ricky Smiley might pop through and tell jokes at the church. You got to show up, though. You got to play go. to win. You don't know what's going to be there. They ain't going to tell go. you. Londa Adams might be in there. Anything. So uh, we get to church. It's, it's humming this Sunday. It's a 12 o'clock service. My daddy liked that. He said that's where the, the real preaching is done. Mm. 8 and 10, you just getting through 12 is where he giving it his all. It's his last go round. So he's like, I'm just going to just offer it up in the prayer call. So they got the prayer in the beginning, you know. They can tell you to go down to the altar for altar call to get prayer. They got a person that's going to pray with you. A person going to whisper to you, so what do you want to pray about? What's concerning you today? What do you want to give to God? You tell them, you know, well, I've been masturbating quite frequently. Uh, I've been having sex with girls and my mom and daddy don't know about it. And I, I don't want to go to hell. Well, you want to go to hell for that? Okay, thank you. Well, let's play a prayer about it. God, whatever. That's how I, typical prayer. Would go. What is prayer I was saying? So, uh, so my daddy... He don't want to accept the prayer that the person is giving him because he, he want to take the prayer. No, because what he want to do, he wants to do what's called testimony. Oh, he want to talk it. He want the mic. He want that mic. He want, he's like, can you, can you say my prayer to the, to the people here in the church because we're praying for a lawyer that's going to take this case. Oh, so, oh, he fishing. so in he his fishing. prayer altar call, the main Kirby John done walked off and went out the back and they like in a like in between phase of praise and worship slash we really wrapping it up to get out of here. So one of the prayer leaders, never forget this, he leans over, my daddy looks dead at him, he's like, hey man, I need to come up there. So he walks up there. Nobody saying nothing. This man walking in church. He walks all the way to damn near to the pulpit. The man stands right there. He's like, What's going on, sir? I need prayer. He said, somebody pray for me. I'm praying for an attorney. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so my daddy led it. I took, I, I took 365 guns out of school, still in high school, he in a five-year period. Out there. I done took over 675 pounds of marijuana off the Throw streets. Stats out there, hey, man. he dropped Work it. I'm a stats. deputy with Precinct 7. Work them you know, stats. You no, know, and uh, people at Cracker Barrel, we need to understand this oppression, and they, they, they racially profiled and humiliated me. Defamation of my character, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lawsuit easily worth $1.1 million. No. <laughs> so... <laughs> He, he getting all this shit off. Now, let me tell you. Easy, man. Let me tell you something. Easy let me tell you something. Money. Let me Come tell you something. I wish I could tell you that that's where it stopped at. It didn't. So the man's ready to pray. He just getting swindled into saying his prayer. My daddy says, hold on a second. I need you to put your hands on something. He walks right out the back door of the church, right out the side, kind of, kind of light trot. He jogging. I said, where in the hell is he going? I'm in the altar. I'm up here. I'm just like, man, I'm with my daddy. People are like, Billy, what's going on? Daddy want to pray about a case. My daddy goes to the car, comes back with a maroon leather briefcase that he's picked up from somewhere. He takes the briefcase up there to the, to the pool pit, gives it to the associate pastor, says, yeah, put your hands on this. This is the case right here. This is all the files <laughs> and the documents. <laughs> Say so what the fuck is in this briefcase? That goddamn parking receipt, gas receipt, and, and tell him all what you was about to shit. order? All the laminated shit. Hey, man, all that laminated shit is in there. <laughs> Pictures of guns, shit totally unrelated to the case. They got nothing to do with this case. A uh, 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 picture of my daddy leaning on front of his car with the, with the speaker, 
He's like, yeah, you got to have an action shot. The fuck is happening? This is a Christ of Fifth Avenue, man. <laughs> What the hell you think happening? You think this chips? You think this real story that the highway patrol? The fuck? Man, look. I swear, man. They praying over this. They got the suitcase. He got it. And they praying over it. I think this nigga thought it was 1.1 million in the briefcase. Because the nigga ran right up out of breath at the church. No, no, I'm going to take the case. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Now, <laughs> my daddy. See, that's the enthusiasm I need. Give me the case. <laughs> ah, ha. Nigga jumped on that goddamn case. Ah, oh, that boy jumped on that case. Hey, look, man. He's like, yeah, man, I went to Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall is the law school at TSU. Yeah, man, you know, hey. Got out of there, passed my ball. Passed my ball in 86. Ain't worked since 89. You know, I started doing corporate law. You know, gave up on myself. Now I'm back. God done told me to go back out there and work, work them cases. You know, God didn't told me to hey, go back out there. Man, look, he took that briefcase with my daddy. They sit in that church parking lot an hour and a half talking about that damn case. Then they start talking about life. My daddy telling him a random story about growing up in Tennessee, about being a coach's son, <laughs> and then about how he played football with Reggie White. It's like, it's all the cool stories that you don't, you're like, all right, if this nigga tell this story about him going, you know, now Usher. I just got out of here. <laughs> That's all me. My boy blowing up. You see him. Check him out. He got a picture of Usher in the briefcase. <laughs> Usher Raymond. Now, I told you. I mean, I had to whoop him, man. He was bad, man. Special ed. Had to redo the piano in there. You know, but that's what I did. Got to give him tough love. Hey, man. Hey, look. He running this whole story down. So this attorney slash I think I'm a preacher is taking the case. The case is in full motion. And remember when I started this story, I told you. It's the opinions of a father refusing to be wrong that is making this painful for the kid. Every Saturday for about five months straight, my dad is going down to the law office and talking to the man about the goddamn case. Every Saturday, 12 to 2, where are we going? We're going down at the Williams Law Firm. Now, Williams Law Firm, let me tell you where it's at. Williams Law Firm shares a sweet space with an OBGYN clinic. So you got to walk in. It's a glass window. It's two doors. Mm -hmm. One door goes to this other side where it's a, it's, a, it's a row of like offices, but they all individual little businesses. So it ain't like he got the whole side. So we in the lobby. It's pregnant women. It's criminals. All just sitting in there. Uh, up next. And then they open the door, you go back there. So he got a little bitty ass, little bitty teeny tiny ass office. So we sitting in there. I can smell the liquor on his breath. And he was talking to my daddy for two hours about this goddamn case. My daddy still asked him, so you got some receipts on the paperwork? It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> oh, it's coming. I'm working on it. I called him. I, I talked to him and stormed to him. <laughs> Come to find out, this nigga ain't doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> he ain't doing <laughs> shit. Talking to my daddy. It's coming. <laughs> just in that it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> now, so look. We in the six month, my daddy's sister, Cheryl, she's an attorney. Well, she never passed the bar, but she's an attorney. Like, mm -hmm. know all the shit. She got a whole phobia about taking a test at another time. It would just kill her self-esteem. I love you, Aunt Cheryl, but don't worry about it. You should have took that goddamn test. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you fucking around teaching English and history for. That ain't the shit you want to do. You need to be in the law. Don't take but, the damn test. So she tells my daddy, I don't know what he's doing, Bill, but it don't take no goddamn six months to put no paperwork to. <laughs> he's talking about who he said he talked to. He said he talked to people at the Supreme Court. He's a, he's a goddamn liar. He ain't talking to nobody. Court. That's the Supreme Court. God shit. Listen. <laughs> listen. This is a local case, listen, man. Listen, man. Listen. So what I didn't know was I thought the man was doing this on the kindness of his heart, helping my daddy. He's talking my daddy out of 50, 75, 100 dollars, whatever he can get out of my daddy. Right. All I got is 50 this week. Hey man, don't matter. I'm gonna call them people and get on them for you. We're gonna work this case out. We're going to get this curse work through. So my daddy's starting to get wind that this nigga full of shit. None of the documents is coming back. He steady printing out shit. Had my daddy sign it. <laughs> and my daddy signing the shit. Yeah, that's going to be, okay, what this one do? Oh, man, you know, it, it gives us access to some files. But we got to get your signature on it to get access to the files. So <laughs> <laughs> You always got another set of papers. Now, what you got for me? He got that. He fold. And this is where I first seen the nigga sign the paper and fold the money up in the paper and staple it and then put it in the drawer. I, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's secure now. Now it's secure. He stapled it. So <laughs> stapled it. Nigga looked over there. Nigga had a drawer full of envelopes. All had different cases. That's how he was organizing his cases and who paid what. 
Wow. Then I say, what are you going to do with all that? He said, oh, I'll go home and write it in my ledger book. Got my ledger book. Got to keep my ledger book. Won't keep it on me. Somebody get my ledger book. I'm in trouble. <laughs> keep it at home. So, nigga, he is doing this for six months. My auntie told my daddy, what's up? My daddy hot. Now, this day, he want to see some action. Well, man, won't you call one of the people right now while I'm in? Well, sir, it's Saturday. Your time is from 12 to 2. I can't get nobody on the phone in D.C. right now. Everybody going home for the weekend. In D.C. <laughs> he working the <laughs> shit out of In D.C. Like, he just connected. So. But he's saying the right shit, though. Now, I want you to know for this six months what's happening outside of going there on Saturdays. Tuesdays. My daddy goes by the Cracker Barrel, stands outside for 10 to 15 minutes, passes out some copy, copy yellow, pink, blue, has discrimination happen to you. Now, I want you to know my daddy's an artist, so he done drew it out with his hand and made a bunch of copies at the school. Blue, yellow, pink. It's, have you been experiencing discrimination at this Cracker Barrel? We're building a class section lawsuit. Call this number, Bill Surreal's. He's out of control. <laughs> Hey, your dad is out. He's giving out now. pamphlets to all the black people. Your dad is out of control. And, and guess what he's doing when he's walking out of that, out of that, out of that uh, restaurant and he having them flies? He doing like this right now. He doing with those. Mm. Deal with that. So stay strong, man. We passing these pamphlets out. I'm like, Daddy, is anybody calling? They calling, son. You just worry about passing these flies out. <laughs> <laughs> they call. <laughs> you got a. Then he gets me with this. You got a phone? No, sir. All right, then. All right, then. When you get a phone, then we'll worry about who calling you. I got enough goddamn people calling me. Shutting your ass down with nothing. You see the man, what I gave him? I gave him the money last week. We prayed over it. He, he from the church. It's going to be a blessed seed. Come on, now. What else can you expect? You know? But I guess church. when I get to 1.1 million, I guess I got to spend the 1.1 million by myself. No. You're you going to want go. some. Suck him in. Suck so, him hey. in. Then you got to ask yourself. Kid. Do you want to be part of the 1.1 million? Or you want to be them suckers that gave up over there? A lot of suckers gave up. You know, a lot of niggas didn't think that they was going to be able to play varsity football and basketball in the same season. I played. I pushed through. Ran cross country, too. <coughs> None of this shit got nothing to do with what's going on. But he got me baited on this shit. And we not eating that Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and we ain't fucking with nobody eating that Cracker Barrel. Right. My daddy getting off the phone. Full out boycott from the Sorrells. Yeah, it's a boycott. One of his homeboys from, from, from school told him, man, I ain't stop eating that no Cracker Barrel. Them people ain't racist, man. They love black people. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you need to let that bullshit case go. So he, <laughs> he talking cash shit. Dave Stevens. Man, Uncle Dave, though, he talking cash shit. He live in Hunters Glen 1 and 2. A Q. Man, that nigga talking, man, anybody, I'm, I'm going to Cracker Barrel. Goddamn best pancakes since my mama made pancakes. Anybody made no pancakes still like that. Ain't giving, he's still going. My daddy, he's like, well, fuck you. I, I, I'm, I'm going to Cracker Barrel. Finally, it's starting to wind down because I sound like a goddamn fool telling people that I'm going to get $1.1 million for this class action lawsuit. You know, because I have a problem of spending money before I get it. I start thinking, well, maybe things will be different. Maybe I can get a, a Honda Accord Coupe if we get $1.1 million. He can't tell me no to that. You deserve it. If I tell him I want to put blind streaks in my goddamn braids. He gonna accept that. You gotta take that. At this point, I'm already knowing. I'm flying to New York, then I'm gonna fly to LA, and I'm gonna find wherever they tape all that at, because they definitely missing me on the fucking show. They gotta show. have you. I, yeah. You got 1.1 Nick 1 who? Million. Who's that guy? They need me on there. You got 1.1 million. Yeah, it's coming. God damn that right shit, it's coming. Nigga, that shit never came. Never came. It's tough. Yeah. It definitely was 1.1 million. My daddy had a standoff with the man. The standoff was he wasn't giving my dad, my dad wasn't giving him more damn money. And he had wrote a letter, which he had also did what? Guess what? Laminated. Laminated that. He laminated made a, a copy letter. of it. Made a copy of it and laminated. Yes, had it, another one in his other briefcase that he started, because he building a case nah, on a nigga case. case on a nigga that was <laughs> supposed to do doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so my daddy got paperwork, he got a file for all the receipts that the nigga had signed. See this letter right here, this letter right here. These are the same letter. See, he just changed the date. That's all he did, change the date. It's the same letter. See, I ain't knowing what it is. I just signed it. I signed it twice. But see, when I, I printed them all out, that's always why you keep your receipts, son. I keep all <laughs> my stuff lined out. Everything lined out. Can't jam me up on nothing. Got paperwork. Can't jam me up. Got, my daddy got in this folder a copy of his degree that he's walking around with laminated. A copy of his initiation certificate to Kappa. A copy yeah, of his letter that he got back from Oprah Winfrey for when he sent an unsolicited 
painting to her house. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> say, say, say. Your daddy said a pup, bruh. Wait, wait. Your daddy said Oprah picture. <laughs> Swear to God. Hold on. Small break in the story. I'm going to wrap this story up. But real How did quick. You get her address? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, Barnes and Noble used to sell celebrity address books. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. $44. Your daddy went in on that. $44 yeah. in 93. A celebrity book. He walking around. He got the shit in his car. He done figured it out. He done found the cheat code because my daddy cold at art. Paint, draw his ass off. Was art teacher for many years. You know how we go through shit, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get money, trying to make shit happen, trying to provide for a family, start trying to think of shit. What can I do to get my family out of this situation? I need to sell this artwork I've been drawing all these goddamn years. Because I was going to blow up until I started fucking with your mama. Right. And I had y'all. <laughs> now I'm shoveling shit. You right. know what I'm saying? I fucked all the baddest bitches at Tennessee State University. I fucked them all. All through Nashville. I fucked the, I fucked the cast of Wiz. Yep. Dorothy and a bunch of them little monkeys from the yellow big road. When the room, fuck shit out of Dorothy on their cast. They came to Nashville, big time play. Everybody was down there to marry everybody. Had them in the bathroom behind the stage, running dick all up in them. And I'm like, all right, where is this going? He says, uh, yeah, so uh, I buy this book. And when I get the book, I got all the addresses. Everybody named me. Look at him, Arsenio, right there. <laughs> Boy, show number one on TV. Guess what he about to get? A print. The nigga made 5,000 copies of one picture. He sold it. But he talked to dude in there and bought the picture from him. We was behind two, two, almost three payments on the house note. My daddy found a doctor, sold him a piece of artwork for five racks in the like early 90s. Had the man pay for 5,000 copies of this picture. He sold him 5,000 copies of his prints. And nigga, shit was on. Wow. Now, we in the original first 5,000 copies. So every number, he got a little booklet where he stopped his numbers at. He add on a number. I think Oprah and them got like uh, uh, 435 or 5,000. They was like in the fours. So the book had Oprah, Arsenio, Michael Jackson. My daddy not only goes through all of them, He's sending shit to all type of people. Barbara Walters, Brian <laughs> Gumbel. <laughs> he done hit the news. Fucking weatherman, big, big white weatherman. His name in there. Guess what they getting? They getting the print. They getting the print. <laughs> now, this, the pra- painting is called Summer Days and Ice Cream. And my sister started getting a tattoo when my daddy died of the painting. Whoever did the, the tattoo fucked, fucked up because it definitely don't look shit like my daddy drawing. I said, no, that ain't my daddy. She showed me the shit and I was like, Woo, what the fuck is that? Oh, you know, it's the pain. Nah, that ain't the pain. pain. But I see where you was going. That's why when I got my tattoo, I was like, nah, I'm not going to rush this on emotion and, and just right. fuck myself off. I'm going to make sure it's good and tight. I love you, Jody. Uh, so my daddy is now sending out these goddamn prints. He's sending these prints out everywhere. Big, tall, 18 by 24 prints in a frame, shipping them because he's going to blow up. So, of course and of going. course he's sending all these people shit. Three people wrote it back. Brian Gumble, Arsenio, Oprah. Now, for people that was big time like Michael Jackson, them days, he asked for a receipt that signed for it. The little carbon copy when they used to give you a package and they sent it back, right. he paid extra $4 to make sure that they sent him that back to know who got it. He had that receipt in there too, laminated. Oh, Mike got it. Mike got the paint because they signed for it. <laughs> <laughs> so Oprah, Brian Gumble, and I'm going to take a picture and send it to you, and uh, Arsenio all got my daddy's artwork. So now he put their name in everything because they sent him back a letter with the, oh, with the letter, with the, le- with the logo. Hey, Bill, love summer days and ice cream, bro. Much love, you boy. Arsenio, big A. He done made three copies of this. He got that shit hanging up in the house. Oh, God damn right. We talking. Hey. Bill blowing up over there. Y'all need to go fuck with him. He fucking with Arsenio, Oprah, and everybody. Everybody love that boy artwork. Big nigga, big time. So he shows this to the doctor because he got it printed out. Mm-hmm. 
hey, doctor, like, yeah, this nigga's definitely balling. This is the art, art, artist of the artist. Had him do a couple more paintings. Daddy had that shit running real smooth. So in that file folder, when we went to go build that case, all this is proof of who he is and why he needs $1.1 million. Goddamn right. You're big time. My daddy got fed up. He gave that man a letter. Told him if he didn't produce any of the documents he said he was going to, he was going to file a lawsuit against him for theft. And he had a receipt. It's two lawsuits. Two lawsuits. Now, who we going to pray for? No lawyer. Now, he tell you. Now, he tell you. No lawyer. <laughs> two lawsuits. <laughs> no fucking lawyer. <laughs> they don't have a fucking attorney, y'all. So, so. <laughs> My daddy making copies and he's fucking. They don't have <laughs> an attorney, bro. Look, he don't give a fuck. Now nah, he's just coming. These these so lawsuits. it's two people he ain't fucking with. Mr. Williams from the church and the goddamn Cracker Barrel. He running this shit into the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> now he's hot. So the man tired of him getting pestered. He done walked up and put the letter on his on his on his car at church. Williams, go to our church now. We church members. Right. He in there with a letter in his suit pocket. <laughs> like he the goddamn. He about, he about to serve him. Like he about to serve him. <laughs> See, if I get it in his hands, he can't say he ain't get it. <laughs> so. <laughs> ah! Ah! Hey, bro. If I put it in his hands, he can't say it. It's proof right there, bro. You touched it, Joe. So, and, and, and listen, man. So, man, he goes back. He posted in the in the in the in the church library, I mean the church bookstore, looking out the window, because that's where all the cars <laughs> lined up at. There he is. There he is right there. Got his wife with him. So I'm walking behind him like, fuck. He's like, Billy, what's your daddy doing? Man, it's business. We taking care of him. Walking out there. I'm behind my daddy. Hey Doc. Hey. Hey partner. Hey. Thought maybe you might want to have this. He been served right here. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed to his man wife. <laughs> he been served. He been served. You seen it. You seen it. <laughs> That's enough for him. You seen it, goddammit. You been served. Say, man, do you know? Boy. Listen, my daddy was shouting on the phone because he called him that night. He, my, the man was on, he had him on speaker and he's walking around the house talking on speaker. Speaker phone loud as shit. I'm just sitting there like, Talking on my phone in my room, and I'm just like, this nigga down here yelling. I don't know what's up, baby. My daddy tripping. He's suing Cracker Barrel. Y'all suing Cracker Barrel? Why y'all mad at Cracker Barrel? Long story, baby. Matter of fact, let me call you back. Click, got on the phone. I'm sitting here, this nigga yelling at this man. He said, Man, I want a result. I want a result by Monday. Or oh, I'm going down. You know, I'm a deputy with file theft of services. I got your receipts. Partner, on the phone. <laughs> One week. Nothing. You're supposed to add it on that Monday. We ain't heard shit, no phone call, no nothing. All right. Two weeks. Nothing. Daddy is hot. He said, see, the only reason why I didn't go down there and file the paperwork on him last week, well, one, because a chick come this week. So I figured, I'm gonna, he, you know, he had a break, because it's 150 to file that. I ain't, I ain't got it like that now. So I don't want to do that. I want, you know, I want my result. Right. What's 150 over 1.1 1. 1 million? <laughs> I'm saying like, all right, man. Oh, he gonna give me some of that money back I gave him. I got receipts. He needs to give me back half because he ain't did shit. Give me back half. Be fair. That's seven hundred dollars. We could get the one point one million if he just worked. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, just need somebody to work with him, man. <sighs> Three weeks go by. I done forgot about this shit. I'm over it. We in the mail. Because that's what we got to do. We got to lock the mailbox in our neighborhood. That's the thing, though. Daddy stops and gets the mail. He don't just go to the house and open the mail up. He wants to talk in the car about the shit that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Like, that's his time. Anytime in the car, in that Fifth Avenue, that's talking time. Right. He going to talk to you about shit he dealing with. You, you counseling him. Mm -hmm. We kids. We don't give a fuck. We in the car. He opening up the mail. Look at that. See that gas bill right there? Got them gas bill up to $48. <laughs> $48 on the gas bill. You know what I was paying for gas when I was in college? Eight dollars for gas. Y'all using way too much goddamn gas. Y'all quit running them hot waters and shower. Joanna, when you turn the shower on, you get right in. Don't you let it warm up. It's a gas-powered water heater down there. It's going to get hot. Yes, sir. Here's another one, Billy. Look at this light bill. 126 light bill. You know what that light bill is right there? You know what that is? Kilowatt hours. Show the times when you use the most lights. Up late talking to them gals. Got your TV on tonight. Told you, cut the damn TV off at night, man. Trying to break me. 
Five year, 126. We had a $70 light bill that we was running. Now we got 126. I guess it's going to get up to 200 next. <laughs> That's what you want to do? Oh, you missed the big time. Talk to all the pretty girls and everything. Brush your hair. I'm a pretty nigga. And, oh, look at me. I'm a karate man. This nigga is <laughs> taking it out on these kids. <laughs> He's letting these kids have it. Hey, we're in his car. We getting all this shit. And Brittany, I'm going to tell you. You know what this is right here? It's my Sam's car receipt. All the money I spent this month. Number one thing we lost, cereals. Told you and I told your brother. Y'all eating cereals in the morning and the night, that's only for the morning. I just spent a whole $25 on cereal this month. And I know it's you, because I find the bowls under your bed. And little sister Brittany just take hers on the chin. And what you see, we got a birthday card. It's from your granddaddy, write him back. I'll call him, no, I'll write him back. He wrote you the card, write him back. Now I gotta write a, a letter back to my granddaddy mm -hmm. and you know, talk about something to tell him thank you. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 there, like a scene from Willy Wonka in a stack of mail. I'm in the back seat. My two sisters is next to me. My mama not there, but he got a stack of mail. On top of the stack now is a huge gold envelope. It's not a regular envelope. It's an envelope with a, with a big, like a, like a stamp of approval. Now, the little stamp sealed. on there is sealed. Got the Cracker Barrel seal sticker on it. Got a nice little ribbon. Red, red. Big gold Cracker Barrel. Daddy picked the envelope up. Tears start coming out of his eyes. <laughs> oh, right when I lost hope. <laughs> oh, God. He done put the tape in. <laughs> Kirk Franklin stomp. Let that hit. You can't take my joy, devil. He all, he is on it. It's a praise party in there. He has not opened this mail yet. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you ever be celebrating some, some bullshit? Didn't know you celebrated some bullshit? I was celebrating some bullshit. You knew it. I, this thing. I, I, I didn't have that feeling like it's 1.1 million in there. And I'm like, <laughs> just didn't feel like they just gonna send you a million dollars? Mm. It ain't enough to fit in there. I done seen a lot of drug dealer movies and definitely a million dollars. It take a it whole, go down like now that. if it's a briefcase, maybe it's, it's, different. A, it's different. It usually don't go down like that. I, I don't know. It, maybe it's a check. Maybe it's, that's what it is. It's definitely a check for right. 1.1 million. But it's 1.1 million. <sighs> Started seeing shit that made me realize this wasn't gonna turn out good for us. But my daddy's so overzealous and so happy. We walking in the house. My sisters, they, they kids. They in on it. We about to be rich. Crack a barrel, all the money. It's one point. Daddy, he, he waving the envelope all around the house. Yep. See, I went through that because God is a test. See, you got to sow your seeds on hollow ground. Good, good ground right there at the church. That's why I'm sowing into it. Right here, touch it. Go on and touch it. Touch the envelope. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't you feel it? That's a blessing. Blessing's coming around. Touch it. He ain't opened his envelope yet. He pulls the ribbon out. Calls my granddaddy on speakerphone. Hey. Hey, boy. You know the guy we serve, don't you? You know the guy we serve, huh? Man. Him and my, dad, him and my granddaddy going back and forth. Hey, boy. What they send you? What they send you? Shoo. Shoo. Let me tell you something. You know the guy we serve. I'm in here and I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the living room sitting there like, man, they need to get this over. This, this not even the suspense ain't killing me. Man. It's like you, you watching a movie and you know how it's gonna turn out. You can feel it. He, he got too much steam on it. Too much steam on this goddamn excitement for this he moment, bro. Twenties on tens. He didn't call all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Ramel, Ramel, come on up here on the phone. Bill on the phone down there. Cracker Barrel and send him the money. <laughs> now nah, that's what's being told in that house. It, it's, it's jumped the step. It went from an envelope to Cracker Barrel done sending the money. Sending the money. Nigga, it is three people over there now. My, my auntie, my Aunt Crystal, my daddy, the other sister, she done pulled up. So it's my granddaddy, Mimi, Crystal. They in Tennessee gathered around mm -hmm. the phone. We in the house. Right. On the phone, me, my daddy, my two sisters. He ain't done yet. Hey, son, where your phone? Give me, give me your private line right quick. Text the phone, calls his mama. <laughs> <laughs> so I was picking the phone. <laughs> so 
So now we got my cordless phone, the phone with the long cord. Everybody on speaker, mommy, you there? Uh, Carl, it's little Bill. He, about to, he done got the envelope. Girl, the money done came. We all there. He unpulls the string, flips the seal. It's got a gold seal on it, y'all. It's tight. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, man. It says, Dear Bill, we always value hardworking men like yourself. The things that you're doing in the schools in Houston is outstanding. We acknowledge your artwork going out to many people across this nation. Oprah Winfrey, Arsenio Hall, <laughs> Brian Gumbel. We loved your print, Summer Days and Ice Cream. We received that as well. We want you to know in the matter of being racist is not in what we do with Cracker Barrel. We want you to know that you have our deepest apologies in dealing with this matter. Since you have been such a loyal customer to us, and we want to rectify this matter without any further commotion, we want you to have a $250 gift certificate <laughs> to Cracker Barrel. Good at any participating Cracker Barrel location. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Now I want you to know how this gift certificate looks. <laughs> Bro. It looks like a dollar bill with a with a with the Cracker Barrel man on it in the president's spot and it just says 250. It's got a signature on it and it's a Cracker Barrel GC. 250. The family has that air sucked clean out of them. Now, let me tell you, who don't make it no better? My granddaddy. He act like he can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> 250. 250,000? Shit, that's a lot. Hey, hey, you can do something with that. <laughs> you can do something with that. So he on the road. 250. How much is that? 250. 250,000? That was Bill got from Cracker Barrel. <laughs> they just sent it to him. Just sent him a check right now. He said he got a check for 250. That's what he talking about. They, my Aunt Cheryl, she on the phone. One is attorney. I told you you should have got you a white boy to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Bill, I mean it. You know, you gave him. Hell, you could have just took all the money you spent paying an attorney and ate all you wanted to a cracker <laughs> barrel. <laughs> but at that point, I'm broke. I'm, I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm dying. Because <laughs> this nigga she said you could have took all the money you spent on an attorney and ate all you wanted a cracker barrel. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> so, hey, I'm dying. I'm, I'm over here, little kid. I'm, huh? Huh? You think it's 50,000? Huh? Granddaddy's still on the phone. Hey, 250. Huh? He said, nah, man. Two, two, 250 gift certificate. What you mean? <laughs> GC, man. A GC. What's that? Credit card? <laughs> he ain't letting it go. 250, dad. Just $250 gift certificate. Oh, God damn. Hey, I'm going to call you back, man. <laughs> so, so, you got to think of the disappointment that he had in a whole nother household. <laughs> Me and my dumb ass son. That's been a thousand dollars on the Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. He got that phone so damn fast. <laughs> When he realized what he was dealing with, <laughs> hey, hey, let me call you back. Boy. <laughs> so, man, my daddy, my daddy took that. Now, mind you, my mama is coming in from work. Mm -hmm. We all sitting in there looking. He's sitting there with the envelope. Got his shirt open, tie undone, jacket. I gave it all I got. What you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you know. People crack a barrel. He uh, sent this today. She looked at it. She was, 250 what? <laughs> the fuck we gonna do with this? <laughs> nah, that's some bullshit. See, I told you stop fucking with that bullshit ass attorney down there. <laughs> How much did you give him, Bill? Well, I gave him, I mean, I gave him 750, but I, he said he was gonna probably give me some of that back. So I can deduct the 250 <laughs> off the 750. <laughs> the that's attorney fine. said he probably gonna give him some of that back. <laughs> Talking about what a turn to get some money back. <laughs> so after the case to be settled. So, 
So look. <sighs> my daddy goes in the goddamn home office, makes a copy of the gift certificate, <laughs> puts that in the goddamn file book. He said, I started with 750. I take that 250 off. Uh, That's 500. Uh, man. It's still 500 short. We at church the next Sunday. Who in there? Williams. Goddamn movies. Goddamn bullshit as attorney. But he, can't, he ain't trying to make a scene in church. That's what my daddy's saying. He want to confront him. Got to let him know what's going on. Right. He got an envelope. Inside this envelope is a copy of the gift certificate attached with the deductions of the money he paid <laughs> next to a copy of all the guns he took off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> the letter that the people from Cracker Barrel wrote to him on top of the letter from Oprah Winfrey, Brian Gumbel, and our city of Hall. Because mm -hmm. I'm a national artist and you can't do this to me. Ain't shit you can do to him. Hey, got this envelope tight. He said, there he is, I see him. Now go on, go through there. I get up out of church. I walk through the bookstore. I'm standing right there looking out the window. My daddy come right up. All right, there he is. He's walking out. Walk out again. Dad say, hey, man. Hey, man, try to hit you, doc. I don't want to keep running you down like this. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my dad <laughs> opens up the envelope and gives it to him again. The dude says, hey. <laughs> I ain't touching this shit. <laughs> Not this time. Not this time. He's like, no, man. I want you to see what's in there. Dude, man opens the letter, opens up the mail, open up the uh, envelope. He start pulling the papers out. He's looking at all. The, I'm trying to. You can tell he's looking at him. He's looking at my daddy being dead ass serious. <laughs> man, wife right there looking at this. <laughs> and I'm standing behind him. And he looked me dead in the eye and he said to me, "Did you miss me? God damn, man! We brought y'all around the world and dropped y'all asses off, man. I'm Delay, man. I'm Billy Terrells. I took my mic off. But I, he was done." I ain't used to this new shit. Yeah. Hey, you know where you can find us. Anywhere podcasts are found, especially on YouTube. Podcasts on Apple devices. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Can't forget our SoundCloud people. And definitely our Patreon folks over there. Patreon. People subscribe to Patreon. You get exclusive material from us. Some stuff that people don't even, some of the, some of the rest, some of the uh, audience won't even get. So subscribe to that, people. It's only, how much is it? $2. Two U.S. Come on, people. We're going to keep the course. content coming for you. We got it for you, people. Content coming.